This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 1416. A simple way to reduce your mortgage payments by Kamiko of thebudgetmom.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. This is the show where I narrate posts from a wide variety of personal finance blogs. We cover so much on this show, from saving to investing to debt reduction and more. So thank you for joining me today and every day. And before we get to it, we cover personal development and minimalism, health, relationships, entrepreneurship, and life advice on our other shows. Just search for Optimal Living Daily wherever you get your podcasts to find them and be sure to subscribe. But for now, let's get right to today's post and continue optimizing your life. A Simple Way to Reduce Your Mortgage Payments by Kamiko of thebudgetmom.com. If you bought your home with less than a 20% down payment, your lender is required to have you buy private mortgage insurance or PMI. This product is strictly a risk management product and only protects the lender if you default on your house payments. PMI is expensive. The amount will vary depending on the buyer's credit score and the size of the down payment. It usually ranges from 0.3 to 1.5% of the original loan amount per year. You, the buyer, pay the premiums, and depending on what Congress decides for that specific year, the premium payments may be deductible on your taxes. Most PMI companies make you pay monthly. However, there are options to pay the PMI in one lump sum. To see how private mortgage insurance affects your monthly mortgage payment, consider the following example. You're looking to buy a home. You currently have a credit score of 740. You buy a home you love, which costs $250,000. You only have $10,000 for a down payment, which is only 4% of the sales price. This leaves you with a loan to value of 96%. The terms of the loan are 3.7% for 30 years. This means you will add an additional $230 a month for your PMI insurance since your down payment was less than 20%. You could cut your monthly mortgage payment by $230 a month by simply getting rid of PMI. So how do you do it? It can be canceled. Once your outstanding loan balance drops to 78% of the home's original value, your lender must automatically cancel your PMI. But what happens if you want to cancel it sooner? One of the things I would suggest is to keep a close eye on your mortgage payments. Once your loan balance reaches 80% of the home's original value, you can call your lender and ask them to cancel it for you. You should always be ready to negotiate. One of the things to have in your corner is a new home appraisal. There are some lenders who will consider the new appraisal value rather than the original sales price or the appraised value when you originally bought the home. If your house is approved for more than what it was when you bought the home, you might meet the 20% equity threshold. Using the example above, assume your house was appraised today for $290,000. You would own the 10% you put down plus the $40,000 it increased. This will put you at 20% equity. A home appraisal usually costs $250 to $500. This may seem like a lot, but if you're paying $230 a month for PMI, this will easily pay for itself. Make extra payments on your loan. Even an extra $50 a month can substantially reduce the term of your loan and cause a serious drop in your loan balance over time. This is the easiest but slowest way to get rid of your PMI. Remember, you only have to reach 20% equity. The amount of time this will take really depends on how much you put down on the house. If you didn't put anything down, then this could take several years. It's important you know your rights when you buy a home. Federal law requires the mortgage lender to let you know at closing how long it will take you to reach the 20% equity threshold. This calculation assumes you will make regular monthly payments. So if you're unsure how long it will take you to cancel your PMI, I suggest digging out your closing paperwork to check. From here, you can recalculate how long it'll take you considering the extra payments every month. Add value to your home. By doing some remodeling in your home, you can increase your home's market value. Adding a room or finishing a basement could significantly improve the value of your home, which in turn will allow you to cancel your PMI. 
I do not recommend going out and spending a fortune on a remodel just to cancel your PMI. If this is something you have already planned or saved for it, then I would suggest this route. If you have completed a remodel on your home and have not appraised your home since the remodel, I would suggest doing this. You've already spent the money to improve your home. Spending a bit more for an appraisal might be worth it. Canceling your PMI could significantly improve your financial future. This will allow you to put more towards retirement, save for your child's future, or even save for a family vacation. If you're in the process of looking for a new home, I would suggest trying to save enough for the 20% down payment. This will save you in the long run. I always look for ways to save money, to add more income to my budget, and this is one of the ways. It's not something you think of right away when you're searching for more income, but it's something that can definitely save you a ton. If you're maxed out on your budget, don't forget to look into your PMI. You just listened to the post titled, A Simple Way to Reduce Your Mortgage Payments by Kamiko of thebudgetmom.com. I appreciate Kamiko pointing out the cost of PMI. It certainly is expensive. When I was buying a house, one lender tried to get me to take on a bigger mortgage, even though I didn't have the 20% down payment, by presenting PMI as no big deal. But when you consider how long you have to pay it and how much it adds to your monthly payments, it is a big deal. I think a general rule of thumb is that if you don't have the 20% down payment, you are simply not in a position to buy the house. However, every rule has exceptions and everyone has unique circumstances to navigate. When I bought my house, I had the 20% down payment in cash, but it was literally all the cash I had on hand. So I was uncomfortable handing all that over. I could have sold some investments for the down payment, but that didn't sit well with me either because I'm a long-term investor. I only invest money that I don't plan on touching for a long time. So what I ended up doing is finding a lender that issued a home equity loan to cover half of the down payment. I paid back this loan aggressively over six months and ended up only paying $200 total in interest. And now I have an open line of credit at a low rate that I can access if I need to borrow money again in the future. This wouldn't have been a great strategy if my income was at risk for any reason, but since I felt pretty good about my job security, it worked out well. I got to avoid PMI, keep some cash on hand for emergencies, and pay a nominal amount in interest for the peace of mind. And that's a wrap for the Sunday show. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll be back tomorrow as usual where your optimal life awaits.